Our Bible reading today is taken from Colossians chapter 2 and verses 6 to 15. Spiritual fullness in Christ. So then, just as you've received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of the world rather than on Christ. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised, with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your sinful nature was put off when you were circumcised by Christ, having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your sinful nature, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us, he has taken it away, nailing it to the cross. And having disarmed the powers and authorities, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them by the cross. Amen. May God bless his word. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our short time together, where we just do a little bit of a reflection on what we looked at on Sunday. Now last Sunday was a covenant service and so I chose a passage from the book of Colossians which Paul wrote and within it, chapter 2, I tried to pick out um, four things for us to look at, four words that I think have kind of a sense of covenant or commitment attached to them. And so we looked, didn't we, together at what it meant to receive Christ as Lord, what it meant to continue in him, what it meant to be built and rooted, and I think I used the word planted for that. So what does it mean to be planted in Christ? And then this call to overflow with thankfulness and I phrased it in the sense of when we planted we overflow with certain fruits fruits that show and declare the good news of God in this world so it's always up to you how you want to unpack scripture for yourself but I will come up with some questions that will come up after this short reflection so let's just have a, a little uh, thing. A question for us could be from this passage. Um, what does it actually mean to receive Christ as Lord? What does that really look like? And um, have we done it? If we say... Well, it looks like this. And then we look at ourselves and say, but I don't look like this that I've described as receiving the Lordship of Jesus. Then then we've got some work to do, maybe to realign our minds and our hearts to what it actually means then to live under the Lordship of Christ. Now, I said on Sunday, this is actually a very radical thing in the time when Paul writes because you would have only have called Caesar Lord. And in fact, another ter 
term for Caesar was he was a son of God. So some of the titles and some of the things that the early church are encouraged to embrace are anti-empire. These are things that get people in trouble. So if it's going to get you in trouble, like <laughs> there's a big challenge, isn't there? Uh, receiving Christ as Lord. But, but how does that work now? What does it mean now to receive Jesus as Lord? And then continue in him. How do we continue in Jesus? Is that about developing practices that are Christ-like, that are not sinful, self-obsessive practices, but we turn to another way, self-sacrificial practices. And what are those practices that help us continue under the Lordship of Jesus? Now, I wonder whether Paul uses the word continue sort of highlighting what I've mentioned earlier, he must have realised that once these believers called Jesus as Lord, it would invite persecution and persecution would be the one thing that would stop them following. So maybe continue is a good word. Don't be discouraged, Paul says, at what you have claimed for yourself in Christ, but continue in it. Again, planted is interesting because I think that's about growth and strength and maturity. So again, easy. We can just mirror the question, can't we? What does it really mean to be planted in Christ? What's that? What kind of uh, soil is that? What's in that soil? <laughs> we, we, we talk about being planted in Christ, but often when you peel all the layers back, we're, we're planted in somebody else's interpretation of Christ and Christianity. But what does it really mean to be planted in Christ? Huh. <sighs> Maybe we've got a lot of unlearning to do sometimes and a lot of repenting. A lot of mind changing, because that's what repentance means. But how do you and I plan ourselves in Christ? And lastly, we looked at this idea of overflowing. As we've received Christ as Lord, as we continue to live in him, as we are built up and planted in him, then we are to overflow with thankfulness. Ah, so like, ah, are we thankful people? Do we present in this world as a people that have hope? That others look to and they can see that there's a hope within us. That is alive. So come on, that question is, does my life look like a life that overflows? And does it overflow with thankfulness? Or does it overflow with moaning and pessimism? I want to, I might put this out as a, as, as a different thing, but I've got a friend who always says to me, it's going to get worse, you know, a Christian friend. It's going to get worse, you know, it's going to get worse. And I think if what's overflowing from your life are the words, it's going to get worse. <laughs> I don't want anything to do with that. What do you do when it's all going to get worse? You hold yourself away and wait for things to get better. No, we are called to overflow with something in to this world right now. So what is it we're overflowing with? 
Or what do you think we should be overflowing with? As those that believe in the good news of Jesus Christ. And of course, all over this, as I said on Sunday, is what Paul says next. Christ is supreme. Ha, the fullness of God dwells within him. Maybe sometimes if I were walking with Christ as Lord, our continuing in, our planting in him and our overflowing isn't what it ought to be. Maybe we have to look at sometimes what it is we think of Jesus himself. Is he really worthy to be received as Lord? <laughs> Does our view and our worship of Christ Jesus reflect who he really is? And, as he, and if it does reflect who he is, then we become like him. There's a wonderful phrase I read recently. You become what you behold. And so the more we look to Jesus, the more we become like him. The more we look to powerful figureheads who will make a nation great. Perhaps the more arrogant we become and the easier it becomes to storm government offices because we become what we behold and worship. So the overflowing part in the end is about what are we becoming? And if somebody was to write a description of you or I, what would they say we overflow with? And would they credit that to the Christ in whom we believe? So some challenges there, and let's then go over and just have a look at some questions that you might want to choose to work through for yourself or in any groups that you might be meeting with. What does it mean to make or receive Jesus as Lord of your life? If you could paint a picture of a person who lives under his lordship, what characteristics would you emphasise? Does your life look like the picture you have created? Receive can look like a one-off thing, but continue implies a journey. How do we continue in Christ? What should we be walking away from and moving toward? If we are to be planted in Christ, what does that mean? What is the soil composed of? How do we grow in the soil? What things do we need to practice in order to grow? We are called to be a people overflowing with thankfulness. But how can we do that? Can you be a believer that doesn't overflow? Would you describe yourself as someone who overflows with thankfulness? Do you think others would describe you that way? If we are doubtful about this, how can we put the thanks back into the fullness we profess to have received in and through Christ? So there we are, some questions designed to try and get you to engage better with the passage of scripture that was read to us at the beginning of our reflection tonight. God bless you all. 
I am hopeful that we are making our way towards the promised land of <laughs> post-pandemic. And I hope that we are all joining together at this moment in time in prayer that the government will be able to timetable these vaccinations well and that as those vaccinations are rolled out, that also they'll, that they'll make wise and good decisions about how we slowly open up and re-enter into um, what we might consider to be normal. I can't wait, honestly, to get back to gathered community and I'm sure that lots of you feel slightly bereft because that opportunity seems to have been taken from us in this pandemic. But even now, we can still choose to have Jesus as Lord. We can still continue in him and we can still plant our lives in him and we can still overflow with thankfulness. Because God in Jesus Christ has overcome all things. And so even now he is able, he is more than able to be with us, more than able to give us the courage and the hope to continue to stand. So that ultimately, as we come back together, a people who have covenanted under God to serve Jesus Christ, we will see the fruits of that in our town. May our town be blessed. May those suffering in our town know that Jesus can be Lord, can be counted on and can give grace and sufficiency. May God's peace and God's love be with you tonight. When we come together on Sunday, remember that we will be taking communion together. So please have some bread and some juice or wine so that we can all together participate in the very thing that gives us our new identity and our grounds of hope in this world. God bless you all.